Hey everyone, Patreon, I have to mention it. I started a couple weeks ago and it's been going great. If you like these videos about declining companies and everything else I talk about, maybe you'd be interested. It helps the channel and you get stuff too. The address is on the screen, it's in the description, it's easy to find. Now, Woolworth. <laughs> Woolworths. Most of the younger viewers probably don't know what this is, which for the older viewers must be a strange concept, because this used to be one of the largest retailers in the world. In terms of popularity, it was practically the Walmart of its time. Can you imagine a future where you're trying to explain to a younger generation what Walmart is? That'd be strange, right? And I don't want to act like I'm any better than the younger generation, I'm part of it. Woolworths is before my time, at this point, it's a thing of the past, but it's an interesting case to study. Of course, they've gone from being at the top of their industry to nothing. They've completely failed, and I'd like to take a look at what happened. Now, I want to mention, this is a complicated company. I hate to just make a statement like this, but it's way more complex than I could possibly ever cover in a short video like this. For a long time, it was practically two separate businesses operating in the United States and Great Britain, which means there's two separate stories to tell here. So I apologize to anyone who wanted to hear about the British Woolworths or Woolies, as you call it, but to simplify things, the focus of this video will be on the United States. Maybe in the future I could make a similar video from the British perspective, but today I chose to focus on the US because that's where it all started and it's just the more comprehensive story. In 1878, there was a man named Frank Winfield Woolworth. He worked in a retail store called Moore & Smith. One day, they found themselves with some excess inventory and wanted to quickly turn it into cash. They set up a little clearance sale by laying out all the items on the counter and selling them for 5 cents each. Woolworth noticed how well everything sold and thought, hey, that would be a great concept for a new store. Just sell everything for 5 cents all the time. Less than a year later, his employer, Moore, agreed to loan him $315 and he left to New York to open his own store, following that model. It was a complete failure and it only lasted a few months. The failure is typically blamed on having a poor store location and the customer seeing the concept as more of a novelty, a novelty that wore off after a few months. But obviously, he didn't give up there. He walked away from the whole experience with a few hundred dollars. He used it to pay off that initial loan and used the rest of it to start a new store, this time in Pennsylvania, and this store was much more successful. In the same year, he opened a second location and put his brother in charge as the manager. In the future years, he just started bringing in all his friends and family to open and operate new stores. He brought in his cousin and some former co-workers, even more, his former employer with the loan. Does anyone have a friend that's always talking about this great business idea they have, always big plans, but maybe a little unrealistic, and they never seem to do anything about it. I'd bet Frank Woolworth was that guy. Here's my impression of an 1878 Frank Woolworth. Not an impression you hear often, by the way. All right, here's my big idea. You know how those clearance sales always do really well? Why not center a whole store around them? Think about it. Nothing over a nickel? And once I get it off the ground, I'll give you all stores to manage. Oh, you'll see. It'll be the next big thing. By this time next year, my boss is going to be working for me. Alright, I'm out of character. But Woolworth actually made it happen. Maybe the lesson we can pull here is if you are that friend and you feel you have a revolutionary new idea, Maybe give it a try. I'm not saying take out a second mortgage and start some get-rich-quick scheme, be smart about it, but we've seen here how it could lead to something big. These initial stores were successful because they were different from anything else out there. For one, of course, the prices were really good. Everything was 5 cents, but that was a little limiting, so they soon added 10 cent items as well. If you're familiar with a 5 and dime store, this is where it started. Also, the entire store operated in an un unconventional way. At the time, stores typically kept all their items behind the counter and you had to ask for what you wanted, but Woolworths put everything on display, like you would expect to see today. In a typical store, they would charge different prices to different people, where here, everyone paid the same thing, like you would expect to see today. In a typical store, it was considered rude to walk in and not buy anything, where at Woolworths, they encouraged people to look around, like you would expect to see today. I think you've caught on to the fact that they started 
many things in the retail world that you would expect to see today. Let me try to paint a picture of just how fast they were growing. After about 20 years of business in the year 1900, they were up to 59 locations and had generated $5 million in sales. Over the next five years, they doubled in size, 120 locations and $10 million in sales. And then seven years later, everything exploded in a good way. See, here's what happened. Remember all of his friends and family that were running those original locations? When they first opened those stores, the deal was generally that they would operate them and actually have half ownership, with Woolworth himself owning the other half. Well, over the years, they had each bought out that other half and started opening their own chains. In 1912, the explosion happened when all of these separate chains decided to merge together. The result was a new publicly traded company with 596 locations and $52 million in sales. The deal made everyone very rich, and they spent over $13 million to build their new office building. It was located in New York and at the time was the largest building in the world. Seven years later, in 1919, Frank Woolworth died at age 66, it had to do with a tooth infection, and by then their business had doubled yet again to 1,200 locations. I found this interesting, Sebastian Kresge, who ran a similar much smaller chain of stores that would later become Kmart, he closed all of his stores for the day of the funeral as a sign of respect. It just helps show how much of a pioneer and a legend in the industry this guy was. Now I think this is a good point to skip ahead and start talking about their decline. In the early 1960s, they were bigger than ever, over $1 billion in annual sales at this point, yet they weren't doing particularly well. It was a different time. The industry of these five and dime stores that they helped start and ruled was shrinking. The new attractive thing for the customers were these big department stores that sold everything. In 1962, they saw the way of the future and started a chain of these stores called Wool Co., which sounds like a good move, but I don't think it was. See, these Woolco stores never did very well. With their original Woolworth stores, they did such a good job at attracting customers and making themselves different from the competition. But with Woolco, I'm not so sure they did it. There was some pretty tough competition too. Woolco started the exact same year as Kmart, Walmart, and Target. That's a competitive environment, and they didn't have any kind of an edge or head start like they had before. In 1983, after years of mixed but generally poor results, all of the Woolco locations closed in the United States. Now, by order of the board of directors, Woolco, after 20 years in the U.S., is going out of business. And a couple additional reasons for their closure, when they started opening them 21 years earlier, they financed their locations through 21 year mortgages, where a large portion of it was due toward the end of the term, which in 1983 was very soon for many of them. Also in the early 1980s, there was an economic recession, which obviously had a negative impact on retailers in general. It was all just becoming too much, and they decided to pull the plug on Wolco, but they lost a lot of money from the whole thing, investing everything in this new store model and sort of neglecting their traditional stores who already weren't doing well for many reasons, changing industry and economic. In the United States, Woolworth stores were still around until the late 1990s, but that whole period was just sort of a slow, tragic decline. They made some attempts to improve things, but it was just too little, too late. Now, here's something that you're not expecting to hear. Woolworth stores in the United States are all gone, but the company still exists. It's Foot Locker, so that's strange. Let me know in the comments, what would you... <laughs> Okay, okay, I'll explain that one a little bit more. In the late 1960s, they decided to buy a shoe store called Kenny. They had over 500 shoe stores in the US, but they also manufactured shoes. The reason was so they'd have a good source of shoes and maybe other clothes for sale in their new Woolco stores, as well as their traditional stores. Really, sort of a hidden gem. In 1974, Kinney opened their first Foot Locker stores, which have always done very well. It's a strange turn of events, but Foot Locker is what exists from the Company. I told you this company was complex, and I didn't even talk about the British end of things. They actually survived the Wolco fiasco and made a nice comeback, but are also gone today. They've been gone for about 10 years. <laughs> 
for real this time. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. Do you want me to talk more about Woolies in the future, or Foot Locker for that matter? There's so much here. I've hardly even scratched the surface when it comes to Woolworths in the United States, but hopefully I've covered the most important parts concerning their rise and fall. Looking back at the situation, it's hard to identify the ideal course of action. I said it didn't seem like it was a good idea to enter the newly formed competitive market of large department stores, but would it have been smart to cling on to their existing model? That model hasn't really withstood the test of time, and if they had stuck with it, I'd probably be saying their mistake was failing to adjust. So what's the answer? Should they have stuck with what they knew and accepted a smaller, likely shrinking presence? Should they have gone ahead and opened Woolco, but found a way to make it more unique from the others, which is easier said than done? Should they have started doing something completely different? Or maybe they were just destined to fail? Also, have you ever been been to one of these stores, and if you have, what's your impression? Good or bad? I'm guessing if it was in the 80s or 90s it probably wasn't great, but I'm curious. Like I said, it's a little before my time, so I've never been there. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.